the common adverse events of nicotine used over a period of time are dozens of things that we'd all rather re- avoid. They include osteoporosis, teeth and gums hurting, dental appliances falling out, chronic anxiety, restlessness, and insomnia, abdominal pain and nausea, increased blood pressure and heart rate, irritation in the mouth and throat, vomiting and diarrhea, impulsivity, mood swings, irritability, learning and memory difficulties. And you know what? I could go on. I'm going to stop there. Ready to live at the higher vibrations where peace, love, joy, and good health are the daily standard? That's what this show is all about. Welcome to Vibe. And here's your host, Robin Openshaw. Hey everyone, Robin Openshaw here. I'm the Green Smoothie Girl online. I want to talk to you about why to reconsider the advice to use nicotine patches or gum for medicinal purposes. I really haven't wanted to write about this or talk about this because people are so excited about using nicotine since a certain former chiropractor took to the podcast circuit saying that it keeps you from getting viruses, it stops arthritis pain, it cures long COVID, and he even claims that it busts up spike protein from the vaccines. So if you really want pharmaceutical synthetic nicotine, which is what he's promoting, to work for any of those uses or any other healing purpose, I apologize in advance that you're not going to like what I have to say, and I hope that you'll listen to and read what a few others say about what terrible advice it is to put people on a pharmaceutical product that is destructive and incredibly addictive in the references that I'll share below. I did my own research, but then I went looking for others with good critical thinking skills and knowledge, talking about how faulty the idea is that Nicorette gum or the skin patch equivalent could possibly be good for you. And in addition to references, PubMed is also full of studies on the harmful effects of nicotine. I think it's going to be years before we know what the harmful effects is of synthetic nicotine. I share a few of my reasons with you here to consider. Number one, the nicotine gum that this former chiropractor is pushing. He put the product he promotes on the screen in a recent interview, so I looked it up to make sure. Sure enough, there isn't even any tobacco in the nicotine product used in the patches he's promoting. It's a chemical product made from nicotinic acid derived from petrochemicals. Same thing that's used to make many of the quote unquote B vitamins. And none of the manufacturers disclose the many chemical processes the substance goes through and the toxic substances with serious adverse events that become their gum product, their vape product, their patch product, their jewel product. I don't know if you remember hearing about jeweling, but was actually removed from the market in 2022. Lots of kids were using it. Lots of them were overdosing on nicotine because it's so easy to use, including indoors, including right out of their backpack in school. But now they are back. Okay, so they're basically e-cigarettes or nicotine packets. Okay, so Zin, for instance, is one of those popular brands with an extra nasty bonus of aspartame as a sweetener, much like holding a wad of tobacco in your cheek, but it's in a little mesh pouch, Uh, aspartame being a neurotoxin. But I'm just going to keep saying this for the sake of your research skills and because you shouldn't just take my word for it or anybody else's, please do some Googling and verify all this for yourself. So check out the bottom of this for suggested Google searches to learn more. I actually suggest questions you might go into Google or any other search engine if you don't trust Google so that it's not just me that you're hearing this from. So it gets worse. Synthetic nicotine is made from petrochemical products, not tobacco. If you wanted to argue that tobacco leaf has medicinal qualities, I would not argue against you on that. But these products are made by pharma and they are derived from petrochemicals. None of the companies 
getting in on the mega billion dollar vaping and nicotine gum and patches and pouches industry are disclosing what all the chemicals and industrial acids and source of their synthetic nicotine are. But Google it and it's not hard to discover. The chemical and pharmaceutical industry have clearly said non-tobacco synthetic nicotine is the future of all these products that have made them a lot of money. So we're not going to discover the carcinogenic or other toxic effects of the vaping and jeweling and synthetic nicotine industry until it's been on the market for 20 to 40 years. That tends to be when the evidence is big enough for long enough that somebody finally does the studies. Look at how it's just now, 70 years later, that we're finally all acknowledging that fluoride in the water was a terrible idea and we're finally banning it. I've been saying it for 25 years. There's been other people who've been saying it even longer than that. It's been proven for many decades. We're finally getting fluoride out of the water. But if you're wanting to use nicotine because you're convinced or at least hopeful that it's a miracle cure for anything and everything, please be aware almost all of these products are not even derived from tobacco. And they've been through many chemical processes to become these synthetic mass-produced products. All the acids and the chemicals in the manufacture, they're not disclosed on the ingredient list because they're in the product from the manufacturer, but it's they're not added, so they don't have to go on the label as ingredients. Number two, let's talk about how cutting a nicotine patch, which is what is being recommended by this former chiropractor, can burn the skin. The former chiropractor is telling people that nicotine is a miracle cure for just about everything. It's He's telling people to take the seven milligram, milligram nicotine patches and cut them in half. Please Google for yourself something like, why do nicotine patches burn the skin when cut? The answers you get as you poke around may have you reconsidering the use of these products at all. They'll tell you that when you cut a nicotine patch, it burns the skin because too much of the chemical um, enters the skin at one time. And many sources will tell you to not cut the patches. So I actually think that any quote unquote holistic healthcare practitioner who thinks that this is a solution to health issues really shouldn't be giving advice to patients. Have you been well served by the pharmaceuticals industry, mostly um, petrochemical products curing your diseases? Has has this been a big boon in your life? Sure, you may feel something when you take something. You may even feel a cessation of pain for some hours temporarily, like Tylenol will do that. Ibuprofen will do that. Opiates will do that. But have you ever actually healed any condition in your body from taking a petrochemical or other pharmaceutical product? Because someone may make the case that they were taking a drug and while they were taking that drug, they got better. And I would ask the question for your consideration, is it possible that your immune and repair functions in your body actually got you over the healing hump and that that just coincided with when you took a drug? I really hate robbing people of their healing stories and I don't know your body and experience like you do, but so often we get correlation mixed up with causation, as in my body healed itself as it virtually always does, but I give credit to whatever pill I was taking at the time, okay, whether the pill is a drug or a supplement. Number three, can we talk about how lots of other toxic ingredients are in the vapes and the jewel and the skin absorptive patch? synthetic nicotine products. I looked up the product that the retired chiropractor promotes and the toxic chemicals in the ingredient list were few and appeared to be related to the patch and the adhesive mostly, not the substance you're absorbing. However, again, the several chemical processes that companies don't disclose in the manufacturing of the substance on the patch, since it's their intellectual property and it's their proprietary advantage, do not end up on the ingredient list. And nicotinic acid, as far as I'm concerned, is poison all by itself. You will have 
quite the research project to get the company that you buy from to disclose what all chemicals were involved in the manufacture, because there's just no regulatory agency that requires them to disclose it to you. But just Google what chemicals are used in manufacturing nicotinic acid or Google what chemicals are used in making synthetic nicotine. The common adverse events of nicotine used over a period of time are dozens of things that we'd all rather avoid. They include osteoporosis, teeth and gums hurting, dental appliances falling out, chronic anxiety, restlessness, and insomnia, abdominal pain and nausea, increased blood pressure and heart rate, irritation in the mouth and throat, vomiting and diarrhea, impulsivity, mood swings, irritability, learning and memory difficulties. And you know what? I could go on. I'm going to stop there. But when you take a hit of nicotine via a spray, a piece of gum, or inhalation, or release via a patch, you do get a dopamine hit for sure. And maybe some people will mistake that for some kind of cure. But after that big dopamine hit, your dopamine crashes down to far below baseline levels for many hours as your body recovers. Except that most people don't allow that and they end up abusing the substance. So they hit the vape 20 or 30 or 50 times a day. This is giving them the amount of nicotine and other toxic substances that are the equivalent of a four pack a day smoker in many cases. As I had a year and a couple shorter periods of my own battle with nicotine, the main thing I recall is that I got very stupid right after taking a hit. I couldn't remember words. So I'm beyond amazed to hear the pro nicotine pushers out there doing content paid by pharma maybe saying that nicotine is good for your brain. Maybe there is something some molecule in the synthetic nicotine that could could be argued to be good for your brain, but I'm telling you my experience with it is that it is bad for my brain. The whole idea that these are smoking cessation tools is such a joke. All you're doing when you stop going outside and lighting up and use one of these products instead is changing your delivery system. I've had multiple people while they're blowing vape in my face tell me that they quit smoking two years ago and they're so proud of themselves. But they're vaping, which is the same thing as smoking. It's just a different form. So in fact, vaping and all the other methods are arguably worse because you don't have to take a smoke break to go outside in public buildings. Okay, I'm old enough to remember when people smoked on airplanes and in restaurants. And I was a server in a restaurant where I would argue with the boss to try to get me a station in the smoking area because smokers drink and drinkers tip. Anyway, so the way people use nicotine now, they don't even need the smoke break and they can take a hit right out of their backpack at school. They can do it in other people's homes, in cars. I remember the first time my daughter brought home a friend who was vaping the whole time he was standing in my living talk, living room talking to me and call me old and old fashioned, but I was so amazed and pretty offended that he was blowing these nicotine products into my house. So the fact is my own brief addiction to synthetic nicotine was caused by being at industry parties with a colleague who is a health and wellness influencer who taught his followers, also me, that his nicotine that he would spray under his tongue every 10 minutes and he'd do it to all the women at parties. He'd tell us to open our mouth and he'd spray it under our tongue. I'd never had such a thing. He claimed that it was a microdose of nicotine and he claimed that it was good for him and good for us. It actually took me hours of research to learn that far from a microdose, as he had claimed, the amount in those sprays was actually higher than any cigarette on the market. Once or twice, he sprayed the thing under my tongue twice, and I almost threw up the couple of times that he did that because I had just completely overdosed on nicotine. It made me sick. So... It took me a couple of hours because this was not something I could find on Google. Google protects pharma 
And I had to contact the company. I had to ask multiple people, multiple questions. I had to be sort of a bulldog. My point is most people will never find out about this. And maybe they will take advice from people like the retired chiropractor or the health and wellness influencer who was a huge nicotine addict and so that he could do it right on his podcast in front of all his followers. He said that it was good for you at a microdose. Um, I now find myself trying to help and encourage a very close family member of mine get off her own synthetic nicotine product of choice. And when it comes to the gum, some people are chewing 20 pieces of nicotine gum a day. That is a lot of toxic chemical exposure. It's a GlaxoSmithKline product, that Nicorette. Go read the ingredients. There's like a dozen toxic chemicals in it. And it's a different way of being a two pack a day smoker. Plus the cost for 15 or 20 pieces of nicotine gum a day is going to be about 15 to 20 bucks a day. Some people eat for that much money. So anyway, please watch some of the short video resources I recently gathered up for a close family member who's struggling with nicotine addiction. Her thing is the little Zin packets. I've had friends who were addicted to everything at some point in their lives say that giving up nicotine was the hardest one. This person close to me would very much like to have a baby, but she knows her body can't handle it. The nicotine problem being one of the reasons. Some of the videos that I want to share with you, so you're not just hearing it from me, are by a doctor named Frank, who's young. He's young. You'll you'll see him and think he's good looking, but he says that his bones are brittle. He has osteoporosis at a young age, and he's had to, he's had all kinds of health problems from his longtime previous addiction to stimulants and especially nicotine. So why on earth would anyone take the most addictive substance perhaps ever discovered and risk addiction and all of the health fallout to hope that this theory is true, that it makes COVID less likely? I mean, COVID's just a cold at this point if you have reasonably good health. And if you want nicotinic acid, and if you consider it a B vitamin, Hey, that's a story for another day. I have published on that as well. It's made from coal tar. Why not save money? And by the way, go Google that. Go say, are B vitamins or nicotinic acid made from tar? You will find out from many sources that this is true. So if you want nicotinic acid, and if you think it's a B vitamin, why not save money and just eat some tar from the road outside? Nicotinic acid, like I said, is is likely is literally derived from the petrochemical tar. It's also what they use to make most of the B vitamins. Obviously, they've synthesized a very potent and concentrated substance from the tar that's very addictive. That's why it doesn't look like tar. That's why it's a billion dollar industry, not because it's healing anyone of anything, but because it's so addictive. So it's nothing more than a theory that the substance binds up certain receptors, certain things in the body that's where COVID attaches as well, making you less likely to get COVID. I searched and searched in public med. I could not find anybody who has proven that. I know a bunch of smokers. And while I do know at least one who didn't get COVID, I know others who did. And in fact, with their respiratory systems weakened from decades of smoking, they were sick for months rather than getting well within two weeks like most of us did. So I will share my references to have you able to quickly hear other perspectives from other people concerned about synthetic nicotine products associated health issues. And then if you keep reading questions to ask Google, let me give you some ideas of it. Here are some of the things that I would Google. What is synthetic nicotine made of? Why do pharma companies make nicotine without tobacco? Okay, it's all about money, you guys. Are nicotine vaping patches or pouches or gum made from synthetic nicotine? Is nicotinic acid made from petrochemicals? When you find the chemicals used to make nicotinic acid, Google toxic side effects of, and then put the chemical in. 
that you learned went into making nicotinic acid. So thank you for your support of my channel. And I hope that this helps you. And I hope that you check out the resources by others. And I'll see you next time. Bye.